till the age of 60. He never put his forehead on the ground, never made a sajda, he was born into a Muslim family in a Muslim country. Until the age of 60, he never prostrated before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not even a single time. He had two sons and Allah guided his sons in, the, in their twenties. They started practicing them praying and they tried to give their father da'wah, give him advice over and over again, but he never responded to his children. He always thought that these are my children, I know more than they do. So he never dealt or handled his pride in order to listen to his sons. And one day he saw his, his son, his eldest son growing his beard. And after his son gave him advice, he said, you know, why don't you shave this? Why don't you take it, out, take it away? The son got shocked and he just said, out of, out of shock, in a state of shock, he said, I'm afraid you'll go to the hellfire. I'm afraid you'll go to the hellfire. He just got offended and sometimes we mix our personal feelings with our concern for others in terms of da'wah. But subhanAllah, it brought about good results. That very word shook the father. He started thinking about himself. And subhanAllah, a few months later, the father sneaks into the masjid and makes his first prayer ever in the masjid where his son, where his, where his son leads the prayer. The son didn't know the first couple of times, but other people brought it to his attention. Understanding the, that his father has an issue with pride, he never spoke with his father about it. He said it seems that he found his way, let him carry on on his own. And that's exactly what he did. This man used to smoke 80 cigarettes every day. 80 cigarettes every day. And one day, he decided, I want to give up smoking. And that was after listening to many classes delivered by his own son. He used to hide behind one of the poles in the masjid and listen to his son speaking. Listen to his son preaching and he got impressed his head turned around, his view of life, his outlook on life started changing. He realized he thought he, he had a life. He thought he was leading a good life. But now he realized that this is the real life. It's in the masjid. Real life is, is when you connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's when you start to feel the sweetness of life and the sweetness of Iman. So he started listening to the, to the talks of his son secretly and even buying some of his tapes and listening to them at home. And ultimately one day, in one day, for those who, who can't give up any kind of addiction, they're stuck with some kind of addiction, cigarettes, uh, alcohol, even any, 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 other, any, any other thing. Sometimes sins could be very addict, addictive. Being unable to lower your gaze, watching nasty things on the internet and on TV, that's a form of addiction and people can't break from it. Sometimes it's worse than smoking. This father one day decided to give up smoking. In one day, he gave up smoking. He didn't reduce the number of cigarettes he, he would smoke every day. He just gave up. He decided. He said, enough is enough. I'm not going to have this anymore. And he gave up smoking from 80 cigarettes a day to zero. So it's a matter of decision. It's a matter of commitment. And you can get, you can get all of this once you connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now I know the father, he is 73 years old now, 73 years old. Now he gave up smoking at the age of 68, at the age of 68. Now among the learned people that I know in my life, and I know a lot, he's one of the most outstanding. At the age of 68, his, his life took a new direction. He read Tafsir Ibn Kathir more than 15 times. He read the Tafsir of Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, which is more than 20 volumes, more than 10 times. He read the history of Ibn Jarir al-Tabari so many times. He read so, the Silsila Sahihah by Shaykh al-Bani, Silsila al more than 30 volumes altogether. He read all of that. And when you sit with him, he only talks, he talks to you about knowledge, deep knowledge. 
And sometimes you, you talk to some of our youth and they say, you know, seeking knowledge is hard. It's difficult. What about this man? How much memory has he got left at the age of 68? That now he's one of the strong students of knowledge in his own country. And when you sit with him, mashallah, you always learn something.